What is going on, my fellow YouTubers? This is Ricky J, baby, for Ricky J Sports. And man, do I have an announcement to make for you all. The Ricky J UFC Fantasy League is back, baby! And season five is going to start once UFC 209 drops on Saturday night. And for all you guys that are new that don't know about the UFC Fantasy League on our channel, well, you need to predict the main event and co-main event of future cards. In the past, what I would do is I would let you all know the schedule, but cards change all the time, and sometimes even cards get scrapped. So what we're going to do is I will let you know maybe a week before by posting a video. So keep your eyes locked on the channel. And what we do is we take part in five UFC events and we predict the main and co-main events. And if there's some really good intriguing fights and you guys are interested in the comment section below, let me know and we'll even add more fights. Because don't forget, when we did season four, I believe it was UFC New York, we had more than two fights. Uh, we had more than two fights that we predicted. But... For all of you guys that don't know, last season was <laughs> epic, man. It went all the way to a tiebreaker, which was the first time ever in our UFC Fantasy League's history. It was Lucas Brodingham and Ben Delatouche. They, um, they tied after the season, so they went down into a tiebreaker. And in the end, Lucas won by sl the slimmest of margins. He won in a tiebreaker 8-7, to seven, but I ended up crowning them both champions but Lucas ultimately was the champion so wow what a season season four was and in the past we've had some great seasons Pat L won the inaugural um, UFC <laughs> fantasy league and then in season two it was my buddy Josh Reyes and me tying it up and then in season three it was MMA God check out his channel he does great predictions he took the crown and he was loving it winning the belt but can't forget about Saeed man Saeed was doing great and then like I said in season four it was Lucas Brodingham winning in a tie break but for all you guys that don't know how the season works is you predict by commenting in the comment section below the main and co-main event fights of my prediction video and if you can predict the winner of the co and main event you get 40 points so if you can just tell me who's going to win, you get 40 points right off the bat. But you also have to predict how the fight will end. Meaning, is it going to end by a KO, TKO, which is the same thing. Is it going to end by decision or submission? And also, you must predict the round the fight will end. So, if it's going to end in the first, second, or third round. So, if you say it's going to be by decision, obviously you're going to say the third round. But if it's a title fight, it's the fifth round. You get how it goes. And then I add up all the points and then I give you guys updates. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot different than just playing the EA Sports UFC 2 game. So uh, it's a ton of fun. So let's get right into UFC 209. Here we go. Here we go. The co-main event between Habib Nurmagomedov, say that a hundred times, and Tony El Kakui Ferguson, the boogeyman. <laughs> I love that guy. This fight is crazy. You know, it's probably one of the most highly anticipated lightweight fights in UFC history. It's got to be up there, top three. And these guys are killers, man. But one would say that Habib's record, he's 24-0. It may be a padded record because for all you guys that don't know, he fought in um, the Pancration Atrium Cup. He fought there. He also fought in M1. He fought in Pro FC. And he, his whole career hasn't been fought in the UFC, and that's fine. But he's beat some tough guys in the UFC, man. Tiago Tavares is no joke. Rafael Dos Anjos is a former lightweight champion. And also, don't forget about Michael Johnson. However, Michael Johnson was teeing off on him in the beginning. You could say it was a little ring rust. But then Habib just turned on his inner gorilla, man. The Russian bear. Remember Oleg Tektarov? This guy is kind of like Oleg Tektarov. He has crazy top game. And I don't know, man. A lot of people seem confused when Habib just gets his arms around you and you just, there's nothing really you can do. And that's what happened to Michael Johnson. He was doing great in the beginning, but once he felt Habib's wrestling, it was game over. Now talking about Tony El Kukui, the boogeyman Ferguson, he is as tough as they come. He's on a nine fight win streak. 
He also beat Rafael Dos Anjos, and what was impressive was how he beat Edson Barbosa by submission. So he is on a tear. His last loss, look at this, the irony was against Michael Johnson, but that was way back in 2012. Now Ferguson is on a tear. Uh, I believe he's in the prime of his fighting career at 33 years old. He's doing awesome. He is flying high, and this is going to be a tough fight. I believe, man, I'm really unsure with respect to how it's going to go, but it can go either way. You know what? If Habib gets Ferguson down, it's not going to be that easy. Like, he could smother him with his, his strength, but Ferguson's so crafty off of his back. He's just so durable, and he kind of just pushes forward, and he doesn't care. He has no respect for anyone's stand-up. He pushes forward, and he just keeps on coming, and he is just so durable. Uh, you could tell I'm unsure right now, but I'm going to have to go with, and I know a lot of you guys are probably going to disagree with me, but I'm going to have to go with Tony Ferguson on this one. I just think that his cardio is second to none. I think Habib will fade later on in the rounds, and this is for the interim title. So when it goes to the fifth round, fourth and fifth rounds, I think that's when Tony Ferguson is going to turn it up, and he has better stand-up than Habib, and Habib... He needs to really tighten up that stand-up game because if he shows that kind of stand-up he showed against Michael Johnson, Tony Ferguson's going to light him up. And I just think Ferguson's going to just outdo him with respect to the heart, man, with, with respect to the heart. But I know Habib, the Habib guys out there may say that I'm wrong. This is number one, you know what, I'm going to take him out. Uh, Conor McGregor, no good. Tony Ferguson, no good. Michael Johnson was nothing. He was like chicken that I'm going to eat before the fight. But uh, I'm going to have to say Tony Ferguson's going to win. It's going to be a seesaw battle, but I'm going to say Ferguson's going to win by decision. Fifth round, man. Let me know in the comment section below who you think is going to win. It's going to be tough, though. I can't wait to watch that fight. Now, people, now the people, main the event main of the event evening. <laughs> Between Tyron Woodley and Steven Wonderboy Thompson. And for all you guys that were hiding in a closet... These guys went to a draw the last time they fought, and I felt so bad for Tyron Woodley because initially, Bruce Buffer said that he won, but it, two judges said that it was a draw, and then one judge said that Tyron Woodley won, but if you think about it, two judges say that it was a draw, one judge said that Woodley won, so it's a majority draw, but first... <laughs> Buffer said that Woodley won and then all of a sudden he brought him back and Woodley was so upset you could kind of understand and then he said it was a majority draw which is insane but these guys fought to a five round fight and in my opinion I think Woodley won the fight I love Stephen Thompson next to GSP Stephen Thompson's my favorite welterweight but I definitely thought Woodley won that fight I think coming into this fight it's going to bear down to which guy can implement their game plan and which guy can go first, man. I think Steven Thompson was a little gun shy. He was respecting Woodley's wrestling a little bit too much. And I know when Woodley turns it on, he could take down Woodley. I uh, sorry, he could take down Thompson at any time, but he was conserving his energy. And I think for Thompson to win this fight, he really needs to put it on him. He's got to go first. He's got to let his kicks go. Like, if you guys saw the Hendricks fight, Hendricks is a great wrestler, just like Woodley, with crazy hands. And Thompson went first, man, and, and utilized his kicks and finished Hendricks in the first round. So I want to see Thompson put the pedal to the metal right when, you know, right when the, the bell hits for the first round to begin. I want him to go and be first. And for Woodley, he needs to do the same he's got to use his wrestling he, uh, he has to stop worrying about gassing out but in my opinion this fight look at this i'm stuttering man i'm stalling it could go either way my heart is with stephen thompson but who knows woodley did do a lot of damage and he hurt thompson i've never seen thompson battered like that so geez, i am not quite sure i'm gonna have to say you know what? I'm going to go with my heart. I'm going to have to say Stephen Thompson is going to shock the world and beat Tyron Woodley. I think Thompson's going to adapt to the first fight and be first and utilize his stamina advantage because I believe he has a stamina advantage. And I think Thompson, you guys are going to think I'm crazy, but I'm going to say Thompson's going to win by stoppage. 
<laughs> That's a bold statement. You know what? This is the fantasy league. No money is on the line. I'm going to say Stephen Thompson is going to win by stoppage in the third round. I think he's going to catch Woodley with one of his crazy kicks, and he's going to finish him and be the new welterweight champion for the Wonder Boy. But I could see it going either way. Let me know in the comment section below. I also forgot to say that at the end of the season, the winner gets a wonderful prize. Nothing crazy, nothing big, just a little gift package that I could send you guys in the mail. So make sure to enter your predictions for the co-main event and the main event of UFC 209. And I can't wait. I'm hosting a crazy party here at my house. About 20 to 30 people are going to be here and we are going to enjoy the fights and I will be locked in and ready. And I'm hope hopefully I'm right, man. The history with this UFC Fantasy League, I've been right up there in the, in the top with respect to the standings. So hopefully I can get off to a good start. Anyhow, people, this is Ricky J, baby, from Ricky J Sports. Tune in to UFC 209. And you are awesome.